The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Zabari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents Trails of Nomads scientific expedition members continue their work in Syria. How many books and manuscripts are kept in the library of Sultan Baybaris Mausoleum? What project of the Syrian government is dedicated to the victory of the Mamluks in the Ain Jalud battle? How many people with the surname Baybaris live in Damascus? Sultan Baybars is one of the bright figures of the Great Steppe who made a worthy contribution to the development of human civilization. During his reign, the Arab world, including Syria, flourished. The Kipchak Sultan was buried here, in the land of Syria. Participants of the scientific expedition visited the Baybars mausoleum and read a prayer. This is the grave of Sultan Baybars. Behind is the grave of his eldest son, Said Berkehan. Sultan Baybars ruled a huge Arab state for 17 years. This is our great ancestor from Deshti Kipchak. He arrived to this country as a captured warrior who was sold as a slave. After that, he managed to rise to the rank of Sultan. He ruled the country for 17 years, from 1260 to 1277. He saved the Arab state from being enslaved by Genghis Khan and the Crusaders. Therefore, in the Arab world, Bibaris has great authority. The mausoleum of Sultan Bibaris was restored under the Cultural Heritage Program. Part of the funds was allocated from the international fund named after Al-Farabi and Sultan Bibaris, which is headed by Sapar Skakov. Thanks to the state and the responsibility of some citizens, the burial and the cemetery where the great ancestor rests were restored. It used to look like this. In 2009, the work was completed. We came here to participate in the official opening. Now all people who come here know that Sultan Baybars is from the Kazakh land. He's our ancestor. Some people didn't know about this before. Many did not understand who he was, where he was from. He was considered an Arab, a Turk, etc. And only now everyone understands that he is from Kazakhstan and is the ancestor of the Kazakhs. These tombstones over the graves of Al Zahir Baybaris and his son Sultan Al Said Berkehan were installed by Kazakhstan. They have an inscription in Kazakh and Arabic languages. Unfortunately, due to the instability in the country, there was no official opening of the mausoleum after the restoration. But tourists can always come here and pray. Mavzali, uh, bul the mausoleum is located in the old city in old damascus 
It is surrounded by old mounds. According to some reports, here was the house of Salah ad-Din fathers. I don't know whether it is true Sultan Babers was first buried behind the mounds. After becoming a sultan, his son Birkihan bought the house of Salah ad-Din, built a mausoleum on this place and we buried his father's remains. He was also buried here. The mausoleum of Sultan Beybaris has long been considered the center of education and science. Here were the Az Zahiriya Madrasa and a rich library. Unfortunately, not everything has been preserved to this day, and yet a large number of books and manuscripts are intact. Participants of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads made audio and video recording of the most valuable historical materials. All this will be given to scientists for study. اليوم بدنا نحكي بشكل موجز عن المحتوى العلمي للمكتبة الظاهرية تحتوي المكتبة على Books from the library of Sultan Baber's mausoleum are kept mainly in the stockroom. There are about 77,000 books here. Also, almost 11,000 very rare manuscripts were kept here. They were taken to the National Library. Many manuscripts were written during the reign of Sultan Babaris. There are documents with his personal seal. Sultan Babaris was not only an outstanding military leader, but also a patron of education and science. He supported scientists in their activities. The ancient writings contain very valuable historical information. There are many interesting facts about the history of Deshti Kipchak. The Kazakh side has created all conditions for studying the documents. During the restoration of the building, a library and reading rooms were equipped. My opinion, uh, your activity and for uh, Zahir Bibers and for Al Farabi uh, to uh, make this investment you have made in Syria for these two great persons, it is very uh, helpful and important and also for the Syrian people, it makes them uh, understand what is uh, Kazakhstan. The members of the scientific expedition led by Sapar Skankov got acquainted with the mausoleum of the great ancestor and also met with his descendants, who were very grateful for the meeting. In their opinion, such support coming from the historical homeland is very important, especially during the period of instability in the region. Az Zahir Beybaris comes from Deshti Kipchak. This is the current territory of Kazakhstan, but he died here. Thanks to the resourcefulness and intelligence, he managed to rise to the level of the Sultan. He formed the Mamluk state and protected the entire Arab world from the conquerors and also contributed to the development and prosperity of a number of states through the reforms carried out. Of course, it is very important to preserve and protect the mausoleum of such an outstanding statesman. The mausoleum of Sultan Beyboris is located in the old port of Damascus. He once lived in this area of the city. Now a lot of people with the surname Beyboris live here. Judging by our family lineage, we are the direct descendants of the Sultan. This is very honorable and we are proud of our origins. After visiting the mausoleum of Sultan Beybars, the members of the expedition visited the Hammam al-Malik al-Zahir, which is just 50 meters from the mausoleum complex. Surprisingly, the bathhouse was built in 985 and is still in operation. Salah ad-Din Ayyubi and Sultan Beybars visited this place. <laughs> This bathhouse has been operating for over a thousand years. Perhaps our ancestor Beberus visited it. The hot steam and hammam affects the whole body. Having visited the hammam, a person gets real pleasure and relief. Then he wraps himself in a warm robe and drinks hot tea. There are many similar baths in Damascus. We are in the old town. There are ancient burial mounds around it. Uh, 
Participants of the scientific expedition, Trails of Nomads got acquainted with the history of the fortress, which is also located near the old city. It was once built by the Romans, Byzantines, Seljuks, and Ayyubids. However, everything that they built was destroyed for various reasons. What has survived to this day was erected during the Mamluk period. After the raids of the Mongol army, the fortress was restored by Sultan Baybars. Bunu ol kısa kaydadan özgürdüyüt, kibir jarların kosat, menin solcağımda mı nau yükün kan altır sol gözündeki. He made changes to the design of the structure and reinforced the walls. To my left is a large channel. The canal was built around the old citadel. The depth of the canal reached three to four meters. This was the first obstacle in the way of the enemies. On both sides of the canal there were walls more than one meter thick, somewhere reaching two or three meters. <laughs> In 1298, the Mongols destroyed the fortress again. However, the descendants of Kalawan restored it. In 1309, the son of Kalawan, An Nasser Muhammad Sultan, restored the citadel and other parts of the structure. After Sultan Babrus, the reconstruction was carried out by Sultan Kalawan. He carried out large-scale work. He completely restored the destroyed parts and even expanded the fortress. Then this work was continued by Sultan Hadil. He did a lot too. Another historical site located next to the mausoleum of Sultan Babrus is the Umayyad Mosque, also known as the Great Mosque of Damascus. Its towers are holy to both Muslims and Christians. The head of the Prophet is buried here. He is recorded in the Quran as the Prophet Yahya and in the Bible as John the Baptist. At various times, this building was used interchangeably by Muslims and Christians. With the arrival of the Arabs, it became a mosque. At the beginning of the 8th century, during the period of Caliph Umayyah, the building acquired its present appearance. After that, it underwent some changes. Here's the burial place of Salah ad-Din Ayyubid. In 1260, the fortress was taken by the Hulagu army, led by a native of the Naiman tribe, Ketbuga. At the same time, the Crusaders approached the fortress. However, the army of Kutuz and Beboris arrived in time to help and liberate the fortress. The Ain Jalut battle, where Hulagu's army was defeated, plays an important role in the history of the Arab countries. The tactics and techniques of the Mamluk army led by Kutuz and Beboris still remain relevant. This is proved by the school Ain Jalut in Damascus. We she's just we are now in the historic district of Damascus called Meze. The school Ain Jalut is located here. You probably know the Battle of Ain Jalut. The Mamluk army inflicted a crushing defeat on the Mongol conquerors in that battle. To honor this victory and heroism of Sultan Babrus, the school was opened. There are several schools in Damascus and several regions of Syria, which also bear the name of Sultan Babrus. There is even a school named after the famous Kipchak Shajar al-Dur. The Syrian people have great respect for the Kipchak sultans, especially Sultan Babars. They fought back against the Crusaders and Mongol conquerors and became protectors for the entire Muslim world. This is proved by the opinions of not only ordinary citizens of the country but also civil servants. During their work in Damascus, and the members of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads met with the Minister of Culture of Syria, Muhammad al Ahmad. He highly appreciates the merits and courage of Sultan Babaris. The mayor of Damascus, Adil Anwar al Olabi, shared his thoughts on this matter. 
We will never forget what Al-Malik Al-Zahir Baybars did for our country and the region as a whole. He opposed the Crusaders and Mongol conquerors and won a victory liberated our land. This peace and harmony were established throughout the Middle East for a long time. In the Ain Jalut battle, the Mamluks showed heroism and courage. I think that the memory of these outstanding personalities that connects Syria and Kazakhstan will further contribute to the strengthening of friendship between our countries. Leader of the expedition, Sapar Iskakov invited everyone he met to visit the capital of Kazakhstan, the city of Nur Sultan. The Syrians were very grateful to this proposal. They became interested and now they think to come to the homeland of such great people as Al-Farabi, Sultan Baybaris and Sultan Kalawan. The descendants of Baybaris were especially anxious about the opportunity to visit their historical homeland. Two years ago, at the invitation of Sapar Iskakov, I visited the capital of Kazakhstan. There, I witnessed one holiday which has been celebrated in Kazakhstan since ancient times. I was touched by the hospitality of the Kazakh people and a very warm welcome. I will never forget this trip. Participants of the scientific expedition, shells of nomads also visited the city of Baalbek. It is located on the territory of today's Lebanon, 70 kilometers from the capital. There is an ancient fortress that dates back to approximately 4th century BC. That is, it belongs to the Aramaic period. <laughs> In 200-300 BC, the city fortress was conquered by the Greeks. They changed its name to Heliopolis, and the old name was Baalbek. This is the name of the god of the Arameans. That is, the temple of Baalbek. The Greeks have been here for a long time. Then the Romans came, of course. Each new ruler introduced some changes. They reconstructed the temples, gave new names. For example, the Temple of the Sun has been changed to the Temple of Jupiter. In the 7th century, the Arabs came and liberated the city. The city returned to its former name, Baalbek. <laughs> In different periods, various buildings and structures were built on this historical land. But there are special ones among them, the secrets of the construction of which are still unknown. For example, how was it possible to build a unique temple in the Baalbek fortress 2,000 years ago? Baalbek Baalbek facility is striking. In the Greek temples, there is a quarry in the lower part at a depth of 200 meters. There are granite blocks. Each of them weighs over a thousand tons. Uh, Two of these stones were lifted up and laid as a foundation. The temple is built on top, but the third block, for some reason, was not raised and now lies in the open pit. This is very surprising. Scientists cannot explain how such a construction is possible without special equipment. How could they raise the thousand-ton blocks to a height of 200 meters? There are, of course, different versions. The legacy of our ancestors reaches our time from ancient civilizations. During the Mamluk period, the city flourished. Mosques and other buildings were built. This is proven by archaeological research. So far, four mosques and several cemeteries have been found.
Sultan Babers built a large mosque. Kalwan also built many buildings and carried out reconstruction. During the Mamluk period, all these structures were used as a military fortification, a citadel. Now, unfortunately, only the places of former buildings and mosques remain. Of course, a lot of time passed. There were various circumstances, as a result of which many objects were destroyed. This monument is a demonstration of what outstanding personalities Sultan Baybaris and Kalawan from Deshta Kipchak wore. They created and united civilizations. Trails of Nomad Scientific Expedition members, if possible, intend to continue their research in this direction. Scientists hope that they will acquaint viewers with many more unexplored pages of history.